Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder with On-Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm back with another Compliance Tip of the Week. Today we're talking about NIST SP800-171 Control 3.3.1, Create and Retain System Audit Logs and Records to the Extent Needed to Enable the Monitoring, Analysis, Investigation, and Reporting of Unlawful or Unauthorized Activity. Now you may have noticed that uh, this is another dot one, which means that we're starting a new control family here, and we're starting to talk about a new subject, and in this case a lot of it deals with sort of audit and logging. And we get introduced uh, for the first time to uh, a, a new type of solution uh, called a SEAM solution. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that here uh, because it's so incredibly critical to cybersecurity. Uh, here's a hint. You're basically more or less mandated to have a SEAM solution in place. And again, if you don't know what SEAM is, it's a security information and event management solution. What all of that really means is security information is going to come from log files. So we're taking log files, we're putting it into a system, the system's going to break it all down, figure out what actually means something important, and then take an action based on that. Uh, so again, that's kind of the root of how all SIEM solutions work. Uh, again, lots more to it, right? So hit me in the comments below if you want to share even more detail about how a SIEM system works. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a, a trigger, uh, if you will, for the internet. So. Uh, lots of different interpretations about what a SIEM system is. But again, for our purposes, uh, and just generally educating and being helpful here, uh, you know, we want to introduce this concept, uh, and, it, and it starts to really come out through this control. So if I was to give a sample answer to this, I would say, hey, look, it's implemented via the SIEM solution, right? That's what it does, plus the physical premise security system, right? So if you've got a building, maybe you're a manufacturer, uh, you know, the physical premise security system is going to be integral to your ability to um, log who came and went, monitor uh, who came and went, actually know what's going on, and then again, help with the analysis, investigation, reporting of any kind of unlawful, unauthorized system activity. So many people in their system security plans only pay attention to the IT, and if you're an IT director here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing you some gold. This is not just an IT standard, right? It's IT, it's HR, it's legal, it's admin, it's physical premise security, it's so much training, big time HR. Right, so much to us. So uh, again, continuing on with the answer, again, uh, via the SEAM solution and physical premise security system, the company has defined the audit log requirements. This is key, you gotta do this in this answer or else you'll upset the auditors, right? We don't wanna do that. Company has defined the audit log requirements for all systems within the environment capable of producing relevant security log information as the computer endpoints capable of, of accessing CUI. So we're gonna make sure we're monitoring those. Servers. Uh, storing, processing, and transmitting CUI. So maybe it's not all of them, but it's certainly the ones that are touching CUI uh, or on those connected networks. The company firewall, uh, again, getting logs out of that, getting alerted, et cetera. And of course, the physical premise security systems so that may be uh, door badge access logs, security cameras, all that good stuff. In addition, log files are all produced and ingested. You'll hear that word a lot when you look into what a SIEM solution is. Uh, you know, again, the system is going to ingest log files uh, from the Azure government environment. So maybe we have some GCC high emails going on, or maybe we have an Azure government tenant set up. So again, I told you earlier, I want to spend a little bit of extra time on this because understanding what a SIEM solution is and why it's so critical, uh, you know, that they've made it mandatory as a part of NIST SP 800-171, um, you know, to have in place through the controls is a big deal. Most mid-level IT people really may have never used one of these systems before, right? If you're a break-fix IT guy, if you're a really busy IT department and you're just like pulling out your hair trying to just make sure that the company stays up and running and handling service tickets, you probably may not have ever used a SIEM solution before. Maybe you don't even really know why it exists. So a SIEM or Security Information and Event Management System uh, there are a few different versions of this naming convention, um, you know, depending upon your manufacturer, whoever's making the software, trying to get their unique selling propositions in. It's something that ingests log files, parses out the important and security related information, uh, particularly whatever you set it up to, to really look out for, and then has the ability to create alerts based on the severity or type of issue found from those log files. It's critical because if all you have on your network is a firewall and antivirus, you would have no idea what is really happening across your network. Um, and, and I mean that, right? So again, there are activities that are precursors to attacks that are not a virus or not you know, necessarily network traffic that would get ruled out by a firewall log. So it is an example. A foreign connection from China or Russia is not malicious on its own. 
We have tons and tons of software friendly vendors that are over there in South Korea, for instance. Again, you may want to know about that. Um, but look, if it's, it's not, but a forward connection that doesn't belong is an absolute indicator of a potential threat or breach. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm a basic sort of you know, machine parts manufacturer or an accounting firm, there is no reason I can think of that Russia should have a continuous connection to my network at three o'clock in the morning, right? I don't know why that would be, but you know, but again, antivirus isn't going to detect that. A firewall is not going to detect that. So, uh, you know, if it shouldn't be there, you need something to let you know that's happening. And this is why antivirus won't do it. Firewalls aren't going to do it. A firewall is nothing but basically, well, it's a firewall, right? It's a rule that something either can or can't get through, but it doesn't really have the intelligence to say, you know what, you can get through because you meet the rule, but you know, I don't know, maybe I should alert the IT guy because uh, you're coming from Russia, right? Or Iran or China or whatever. Uh, so again, firewalls don't do it. They just allow the rules. You must have something more. And if you are new to cybersecurity and this is your first time diving into this, Welcome to the very tip of the of the cybersecurity iceberg, right? This is really where you know you get out of the breakfast, you get rid of the you know sort of making the network work, which is our first job, right, as IT people. But this is where cybersecurity begins, real quote unquote threat intelligence. Now, is it built into a lot of tools? Sure, it is. But you know you really need something more intelligent. And again, this compliance standard mandates it anyway. Not knowing what's going on is not okay anymore. Again, people can go out to the dark web, they can buy your logins and passwords that have been leaked on the internet or stolen or maybe guessed through some kind of an attack. Uh, another great example, I just have to give this example because it's so critical to so many ransomware attacks is, you don't have anything on your network telling you if there's been 10,000 bad logins to your system in the last 24 hours, okay? That's called a brute force attack. And if there's nothing there to tell you that that's happening, then it could continue on for weeks and months and years. And eventually, I promise you, my friends, they will get the right set of passwords. They'll get into your network. They'll be able to lay those packet sniffing uh, programs down, uh, you know, regardless of the initial access that they get. So again, that's why it's so critical to have something that is actually giving you intelligence about what's going on, good, bad, ugly, et cetera. And an antivirus and a firewall, just not good enough. So thankfully, believe it or not, the government's done an amazing thing. This standard really calls it out in detail. They make it so there's no way around it. Uh, and again, I'm just such a massive advocate. And if you have no idea, you know, you're just sort of looking at this and you're like, man, a seam solution, this sounds really complex. I have nowhere to begin. Here is the great news, all right? If you're trying to get compliant with DFARS, NIST SP-800-171, or CMMC on your own, and looking for help, our compliance experts are always on call for you. A lot of people don't know this. We are a worldwide managed IT service cybersecurity and compliance advisor, okay? We help hundreds of businesses all across the world. We primarily specialize in defense, but if your goal is to get secure, on call can help with that. So look, visit nist800171compliance.com or check out the bio below for links to make life easy. There you can find more information about how we can help. Self-schedule time at your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website or learn more about our completely done for you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. And look, if you're, if, if you're that IT guy, if you're that busy IT guy, maybe you got a small group of people you don't have time for the for the cybersecurity stuff. We see this all the time, right? The small to mid-sized IT department, maybe you even bought a same solution, but you really have no time to configure it correctly. And you certainly don't have time to really pay attention to what it's doing because you're just trying to fight the good fight and keep these service tickets at, at bay, keep the company up and going, right? Make the bosses happy. Uh, and, and you're thinking, man, you know, the same stuff, all these alerts that I see, you know, it's just a whole bunch of noise. Look, we can help with that. We can help you quell the noise. We can help you get it configured correctly. We can really help you do cybersecurity the right way. If you love the content we're putting out for you, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button. We do these videos for free. It's our way of giving back. We know the standard is complex. We're all about making sure that we can level the playing field against these much, much larger companies that are out there that you're competing against for those government contracts to keep these American jobs in, in, in place. And uh, hey, look, if you love the content we're doing, even better, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out, helps us get the compliance content as soon as our compliance learns roll it out right to you. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMMC certification everybody's going to have to eventually go through. And hey, until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there. Hit us in the comments below. Let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. And I'll see you on the next one.